Welcome, guys. So uh, I actually just finished wrapping up the uh, the new hybrid testing webinar, and um, it kind of came to me that a lot of people don't understand how to interpret their ads. It's preventing them from knowing when and how to scale their ads or their campaigns. And it's quite simple. There are two ways to establish the burden of proof that you need in order to justify raising a budget. We don't do it on a whim. We do it data-driven. Two ways, guys, okay? One is consistency across multiple ad sets. That establishes your burden of proof. The second way is consistency over time on limited ad sets or campaigns if you're doing CBO, as you see on my screen here. So this is actually the testing uh, ad account that I used for the webinar. I actually launched real products on, uh, on one of my stores and with the, new, with the new method. And as you can see, things went quite well. Um, these were three products that I had never tested before. And this is a brand new ad account. So it was really just a, a raw um, sampling. And I picked products from three different niches, all right? So you don't have to niche down your ad accounts, guys. It's, it's ridiculous. There's so much misinformation out there. Um, and they're all running on the same pixel. Uh, let's see if we can find some examples here on burden of proof and different, different ways that these things, uh, that I look at these accounts um, and can confidently raise or decrease a budget and know that I'm making the right decision. So product number one, testing product number one. So I highlight it really quick. Um, when did I launch this? Is it uh, the 14th? Yeah. All right. So day one here, guys. Let's check uh, Sunday. No, I launched it on Sunday. Okay. So day one uh, didn't look great. You can actually see uh, here's the, the third campaign for both product number two and product number three uh, deactivated right now. Um, if you want, you can pause and kind of get a handle on how things are organized on my screen. Um, testing product number one. Let's, let's look at the first 48 hours here. All right. We have sales on all three campaigns. The ROAS is very different. The reason is because uh, this product has multiple price levels. And I've done that intentionally to push people towards the higher cost product. And it looks like, you know, this person obviously took it $120 or whatever it was. Um, and uh, this person did not. So uh, we hadn't reached a point where we'd spent enough money to establish enough consistency to make a decision here. So we're still looking at, we normally look at three to four day uh, samplings of data, all right? So here's our third day, and we're looking much more consistent, all right? Now, let's keep in mind, and you have to, you have to always <clears throat> season your <laughs> perspective with what day of the week your ads are running on too, because... Uh, Sundays are kind of a wild card day. It could be good. It could be bad. Mondays and Tuesdays are overwhelmingly bad in my experience. Uh, and then they gradually get better Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So let's take a four day snapshot here. It's actually like a three and a half day because these were launched in the middle of Sunday. Um, and now we've reached our burden of proof for scaling. We are profitable on all three. Okay. So there's uh, a couple of different ways that I teach scaling, and it's dependent on different circumstances, which are all determined by data. Uh, and so I decided to do um, a split off campaign, uh, a different type of a more aggressive scaling, uh, because it was so consistent across the board. This is what I love to see here on a product. Um, consistency across multiple ad sets over a period of time. Now, let's say only one of these ad sets was profitable. All right. Let's say two of them were just, and I had, you know, we've spent enough money, hundred, well, like hundred dollars here, right? It's a lot. Uh, and let's say two of them were not profitable, and I wanted to turn them off. But one of them, was, let's say one of them was looking great, like a three ROAS. Well, obviously we're not going to turn that one off, right? We're going to let that ride. But you don't want to scale it either, 
Because right now, if, if one out of three was profitable, you're looking at a 30% success rate. And now you can apply that 30% success rate across ad sets to, um, to your, your chances of success with scaling. So we've achieved a 30% success rate with how many campaigns we've launched. So if I were to raise the budget on that ad set, I'd have a 30% chance of it maintaining profitability if I were to raise the budget. I would have a 30% chance of maintaining profitability if I were to duplicate out more campaigns. Okay, I would have a 30% chance of doing anything profitably. Now, in my opinion, because all three are profitable, that's it, nothing's ever 100%. But in my mind, that is very strong evidence that we can scale. Okay, practically 100% chance of success for anything that I launch at this point with that product. If one of them was profitable, I wouldn't take that 30% chance. I don't like gambling, all right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it ride. I'm gonna say, all right, Mr. Campaign Loan Survivor, I'm gonna let you ride. I'm gonna let you run and see how far, see how long you maintain this profitability. I want, to, I want you to establish for me that it was not a fluke that you were profitable. And the way we do that is by letting it run over a period of time. So one week, maybe two even. All right, let's say we wait, let's say we wait two weeks and it's still profitable. Then I say, all right, I feel pretty confident in where you're at now. Let's go ahead and try some moderate risk level scaling, like my hybrid scaling technique that we use for weaker products. Because it's still a weaker product, even if it's profitable for two weeks. Still, it's still weak in my opinion because two of the campaigns died off. But it has established enough proof that it wasn't a fluke for me to invest more money in the scaling process. So the strength that these ad sets show determines um, our level of aggression with scaling too. Okay, so if if like if all three ad sets are profitable, then I'm going to go with the most aggressive scaling strategy. If if only one or you know a, per, a small percentage of the if let's say less than fifty percent of the results are profitable, then I'm going to go with a low risk scaling option, and that is to let it ride a little bit longer and then move into something like hybrid scaling. All right, so you establish your proof by, by uh, seeing consistency across multiple ad sets, by a majority of ad sets. All right, when I say multiple, I don't mean launch 10. And, and when I say ad set, it's interchangeable with campaign because of the way CBO works now. It could be campaign or, uh, if it's CBO or ad set if it's ABO. Um, but if you launch 10 and three of them are profitable, I'm not saying, yes, you've got a multiple, you're looking great. No, that's only 30%, all right? You want a majority of your ads to be profitable. And that means the majority of your scaling attempts are going to be profitable. So hopefully that makes sense, guys, and, and uh, gives you a little bit of confidence in dealing with these numbers. Uh, once you do it enough times, um, you can confidently jump into anybody's account without knowing what the hell they're advertising and start making adjustments based on the data that you see. That's the level you should be at. All right, so thanks, guys. That's it. A uh, quick little video on when and how to scale and how to establish that burden of proof. Mm -hmm.